Praise God. In the first service, the Lord led me to say some certain things. And uh, I was even wondering why I was saying them. But at least I think I can see one or two reasons for saying them. Hallelujah. We have a guest in the house. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have not introduced my guest. Are you are? Uh... <laughs> Hallelujah. All of you excited? Kings will look for you. <laughs> this is completely unarranged. We are completely unaware. But God brought him. And now hear this. God brought him to bless him. God brought him to do what? Bless him. When you meet people for the first time, you need to, caref you need to be careful with them. So I was careful enough to go to him and ask him. This is my first time meeting him. Ask him. Most times when people like this come, they are always in a hurry. Sometimes you just see them hurry you, want to even close a service. But I asked him, how long do you want to stay? And he told me. So I knew that he didn't come for campaign. He came to worship God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know I was talking about humility. Was I talking about humility? Yes, sir. Humility is a virtue. The proud will not rule us again. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Very fast. It's our youth convention and we are having the grand finale today. And the topic is youthful and useful. Youthful and useful. So please, you listen well. It will be a blessing to you. John 3.16. All of you know that scripture. We can quote it offhand. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. On Wednesday we looked at youthful and useful to yourself. How to be useful to yourself as a person. And in the first service, I talked about youthful and useful, part two, to your family and to your society. And in this service right now, I am continuing the part two of the part two of youthful and useful to your family and to your society. Maybe I would say the Holy Spirit of God led them here because what we are doing has to do with what they are into. In John 3.16, the Bible says God loved the world and because of the measure of love he had for the world, he had to give his son. Now hear this. To live and to exist are two different things. To live is to create and make impact. Some people are not living in spite of the fact that they are alive on the earth. They are not living.
Some are just existing. To exist is to go through life without impact. That guy existed. The next word you'll be hearing now, just receive with all your heart. When your time on earth will be over, everybody know that somebody like you lived on the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. To live is to have your footprint in the sands of time. That is to make generational impact. You know, there is this grammar that says somebody has outlived his generation. You outlive your time and your generation. God so loved the world. He was much in love with the world. He gave his only begotten son. So I'm doing making generational impact. To make generational impact is to leave your time on the earth. All the youths listed. <laughs> As if I knew, I wrote this. I didn't know. Just like we know that politicians <laughs> think the next election, but great leaders think the next generation. We had somebody that said that the reason why he wants to be president is because it's his turn. Well, if it is turn by turn, it is my turn too. <laughs> to be president. No. That's thinking the next election. That's thinking. To come and show what you think you have. No. Leadership is thinking the next generation. That after you are gone, they are still talking about you. In America, they have a day called Abraham Lincoln Day. A one-time president. I wrote all these things. I didn't know. It was in the night. Oh. Because the man lived. Not that he existed. Impacted America. The whole war. Presently there is a war between Ukraine and Russia. Immediately that war started. The first two weeks of that war, I was monitoring all the news. A museum in France where Putin, uh, Putin's Portrait is, is um, statue is. They went and destroyed it. They regret that such a man lived. Even today, people are running away from Russia because he has declared that they should catch men anywhere they find the men and put uniform on them and give them guns to go for war. People are running for their life. I have one prayer here that by the time you are through here on earth, everyone, including those who are not born now, they will know you lived here in the name of Jesus. The topic is making generational impact.
<laughs> Please. Note this. To make generational impact, you must be a tomorrow thinker. Not a today thinker. You want to eat everything now? You want to get everything now? No, sir. Be a tomorrow thinker. I'm not a politician. I've never been one. But you see, when you see good leaders, Nothing should stop you from recognizing them. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Before today, you are tested. If it's not true, too, you are test. That I've been sounding that there is a presidential aspirant in Nigeria. When he was governor, he was a tomorrow thinker. And because he was a tomorrow thinker, his works as a governor are now his credentials. For presidential aspiration. And you know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Have I said it here before? Yes, sir. You know, some people don't like the truth. But in spite of the fact that they don't like it, we'll still say it. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, sir. You come make generational impact if you are not a tomorrow thinker. We had a president in Nigeria that carried money and stocked somewhere that even as his debt till now, they are still trying to recover the money. Nigeria is blessed. Yeah. Hallelujah. We want to believe that everyone here today is a youth. And as they are youthful, they will be useful. In the name of Jesus Christ. To live for today is good. But to live for tomorrow is a blessing. To live for today is good. But to live for tomorrow is a blessing. John chapter 4, 1 to 12. John 4, 1 to 12. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, verse 2. Though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, verse 3. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Watch it. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Wait, 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 wait. That's a parcel of ground that somebody gave to somebody. Who gave to somebody? Jacob. Talk to me. Who gave to somebody? Jacob. Jacob gave Joseph a parcel of ground. Who came to that parcel of ground? Jesus. Jesus. So we have J. And J, and J, Jacob gave to Joseph and Jesus came to the place. Jacob gave to Joseph and then Jesus came to the place. Now, what happened there? The next verse, please. Now, Jacob's well was there, my God. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. Let's go. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, give me to drink, Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Verse 11 and 12. We stop there. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? 
The next one. Are down. Watch it now. My God. My God. My God. The woman is asking. Are thou greater than our father, Jacob, which gave us the wealth and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? You bring back verse 12 again. Now watch it. Jacob was dead at this time. Many generations. But what he gave to Joseph, somebody came in the third generation to come and partake of it. Making generational impact. J gave to J. And what he gave to J, another J came to enjoy it. I pray that by the time you live here, somebody will benefit from what you are doing now. Is anybody hearing my voice here right now? To make generational impact, you must be a tomorrow thinker. Everything must not end now. Everything must not end with you. You must not finish everything. Think about the next generation. Every time I preach this topic, I'm preaching in so many youth conventions of other churches. I keep remembering something. The first time I traveled to the U.S., I was privileged to be picked by somebody at the Los Angeles airport. Moving I, from the airport of Los Angeles, all manner of skyscrapers, all manner of flyovers, bridges everywhere. So I turned, I said to the man, man, all of them, you, you see the high sea. I said, what is this? The man that was driving me said to me that the people who built some of those flyovers, all those bridges, that some of them died while building the bridges. So he said that those men were asked to stop. Immediately you move from the airport, the Los Angeles airport, you see that skyscraper everywhere. He said they said, when they started dying, falling into the sea and drowning, they asked them to stop. He said most of them said they will not stop. Now the reason why they will not stop is that they are building it for their children. They are building it for their children. Everywhere I preach this message, I share it. Tomorrow thinkers, people are building what they will not even enjoy, but they had their children in mind. I decree today, you will not be a liability to your generation. A father that suffers and wants the children to suffer is a bad father. Because the Bible says, a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. You know, contrary to tradition, the, the African man's tradition is that when you give birth to children, you begin to prepare yourself for your children to take care of you. I don't know. Are you understanding what I'm talking about here? Right now? Most of us, we are already experiencing it. That your, as your father give, gave birth to you, with time they begin to tell you, 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 you should go to school, you should do business, you should have money so that you can take care of them. That's Proverbs 13, 22. A good man liveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. No, that is not the culture of the Bible. The culture of the Bible is not that your children will come and take care of you when you are old. No, the culture of the Bible is that even when you give birth to children, and have grandchildren, you will still be the one taking care of them. Hi, I want to pray for somebody. And this one will hit on your head. I decree. I your children's children will wake up to thank God for you. Amen. We are in a time when everything must finish with us. And that is erroneous. Very, very erroneous. All the youths hear my voice. I want to believe that in the next 10 to 20 years, somebody will be thanking God for you. Amen. I said somebody will be thanking God for you. Amen. Oh, I like the statement here. You cannot come and go. No, you cannot come and go. Tell somebody you cannot come and go. 
<laughs> ah, that you came here on earth and after everything they say you are gone. They say you are gone. You came and you are gone. No. The right thing is for you to come and stay. Tell somebody I will come and stay. I will come and stay. The next question in your heart now is how can somebody come and stay? You can't stay here forever. Now listen. Wise people come and stay in the minds of men. Wise people come and stay in the hearts of men for their impact. For their impact. For their impact. You will permit me. Even last night when I was preparing, when I, after writing what I wrote, I laughed and I said, I'm going to explain. How many of you here have heard of Bob Marley? How many of you have heard the name Bob Marley? Raise up your hand. Whether you are born in the 70s, you are born in the 80s, you are born in the, in the 60s, you are born in the 90s, you are born in the 2000s. How many have heard of Bob Marley? You've heard of Bob Marley? Have you heard of Bob Marley? Yes, now, it's very funny. Watch it. Bob Marley is not a Christian. That's why in the first service I told you that what I'm preaching today is not for Christians. It is not for sinners. It is for humanity. Whether you are Christian, Muslim, pagan, this message is for you. It has nothing to do with church. But Mali came and some people will say he is gone. He is not gone. He has stayed in the minds of people. Even those who don't like him. Some church people still play Bob Marley music. Am I talking to somebody here right now? Okay, there is no time. I could have just done something now. I could have called the instrumentalist and then I asked them to take the stage and I said, give me reggae. When I say, give me reggae beat. There are so many Christian songs sung with reggae beat. But who brought it? Bob Marley. He came and he stayed. He came, he did not go. The question is, as you have come, what will keep you in the minds of men? Am I talking to anybody here right now? What will keep you in the minds of men? Not Arorala. Oh, the way you are laughing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bob Marley was born in 19... 45, and died 11th of May, 1981. Came, and is still here. 81 has passed. People of 90s, here about Mali. People of 2000, here about Mali. He has stayed in their mind. Am I talking to anybody here right now? There's a woman called Catherine Kuman. Catherine Kuman was born in 1907. Catherine Kuman, born in 1907, died in 1975. Somebody will say she's gone. She's not gone. She stayed. We have Catherine Kuman in so many people. We have her in Benihim. Hello. Her impact today has also reached me. Catherine Kuman lives in me. Because she took what she came with and gave to Benihin. Benihin also gave to me. That's why when we say he touched me, people are blessed. I decree here, someone here, you will leave an impact here. Yeah. Hello? No, I can't hear you. Hello? No, Even if your village people don't like good things. I decree you will change the system. You will change the system in the name of Jesus. There is a man who came here. He stayed only three and a half years. Did ministry for three and a half years. That's a three and a half. Only three and a half years ministry. He did not go. He stayed. Tell somebody he stayed. he stayed. How did he stay? As he was going, he left the Holy Ghost with us. 
Is there anybody here that knows his name? Can I hear his name in your mouth? And the Holy Ghost is a continuation of who he is and what he does. Somebody tell your neighbor, I, I am not coming to go, I'm coming to stay. There is a Bible we call Dick Bible. Dick. The Dick Bible is the most comprehensive Bible. It was compiled by a man called Dick. Dr. Dick. Now, it took Dick 40 years to compile the Dick Bible. 40 years. That's what he lived for. And left it for us here. That's the Bible that if you're a pastor and you are serious, you must have it. Until now that we now have the soft copy of Bibles everywhere. Now here it is, very fast. Three laws of generational impact. If you must be a tomorrow thinker, a, a, uh, a generational impact maker, Number one, you must be a tomorrow thinker. We are saying it emphatically. Don't think today. Think tomorrow. Hello? Hello? One of the ways to know that somebody is not a tomorrow thinker. Check. The person has no savings. Ask your neighbor, do you have savings? Some people, once money enter their hand, they want to finish it that time. If it doesn't finish, they will never have peace. They will keep remembering everything they should buy. They remember new pants. They remember everything. Everything. Everything new, new, everything. But once the money finish, their eye will clear. Am I talking to anybody here right now? You will not be like that. A tomorrow thinker is a seed sower. That's number two. Because while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest does not have to do with money alone. Every good thing you do is a seed. Every act is a seed. You do bad is a seed. It is waiting for you tomorrow. So be a tomorrow thinker by doing the right thing. Number two, the law of making generational impact. If you must be a generational impact maker, you must be sacrificial. Sacrificial. You must live a sacrificial life. You live a sacrificial life. Let me ask you a question, and this is going to open you up now. It's a debate. Open up. I want to hear the first three persons. Possibly ladies. All the youth, are you here? Yes, sir. If you're a mother and you give birth to a child and your child is two months or three months and there is cold and you don't have anything to cover your child, it's just what you're wearing. If the child dies, you are still alive. You can have another child. The cold is too much trying to kill your child. You and the child, who should Put on the clothes. Yes, the child? Yes, the child? Yes, Why? I don't like answers without without thinking. Who who why? Somebody raise your hand. Give me the answer. I told you today. That's the way it's eh? Yeah? Okay, you Okay, okay, what, what, what if you, the, the mother die? Who takes care of the child? Okay, okay, that's a man, you want to talk, or you talk? Can I get the third one? The third one and the last one. Who is speaking? Who is going to talk to me? The third one. I wanted a female. Huh? I, don't, I can't see the face of that person. Yes? 
Talk to me. There is only one cloth. And a woman and a child is under the coal. Who should use the cloth? Talk. And cover the child. So uh, what now happens to you? Okay. I know so many hands will go up, but now listen. Watch it. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes, watch it. That's why this place is different. There are churches you go to, members don't talk. Pastor will preach all through. Even whether it's correct or it's not correct, carry it and go. Here, as we preach, we make it interactive once in a while. Now watch it. Never you think that everybody thinks the same way you think. That's a problem. Never. Have a way of psyching people. Everybody does not think the way you think. Now you can hear somebody say she will sacrifice the cloth for the child. And that person said the woman needs to use the cloth. And that person is saying somebody, she needs to sacrifice the cloth for the child. Look at the truth. If you are a selfish person, you can't sacrifice that cloth to the child. But if you are a generous person, a tomorrow thinker, you will choose to die instead of the child. Why? You have lived life. You have seen life. Let this child see life. I met a pastor in Ghana. We went for a conference. He's an old man, about 70-something years. And then he told me how God has blessed their ministry in South Africa. He's a South African. While he was talking, I said, Sir, as you are here in Ghana, who is going to preach? He said, no, 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 no. That he has stopped preaching a long time. That he doesn't preach in the church again. At 70-something. I, I said, he said he has handed over to somebody that he goes to church, sit down and listen to the word. Where there are questions to be asked, he will ask. Where there are answers to give, he will give answers. And then he made a comment. He said, I don't want to die on the pulpit. Just like that man said, our politicians want to die in the office. They are seeing the next generation. They don't want to pass the button. That is not the life of a generational impact maker. Today, I pray a prayer. If your amen can be loud, then it will. Today, I decree grace to be sacrificial. Receive in the name of Jesus. Well, is this, uh, this is com a complete coincidence. There was no plan. I was not aware. There was no way they informed us that some people will come here. This is the message I prepared. But do I hear this? I prepared. If you come, you will see it. There is a man Nigeria should always honor all his lifetime. And that man is good luck, Jonathan. Yeah. I followed the news during the election and everything. I had a man say that the life of Nigerians is so precious that he would not want anybody's blood to be shed. And because of that, he relinquished power. Relinquished power. He sacrificed it. Relinquished power. I've never met him. I've never. But wherever he is, may the God of Nigeria bless his family. Amen. When we say the truth, 
It can still anger people. But it doesn't bother us. The truth is the truth. Number three. Is it number four? You three now. Okay, any number, put there. Put any number there. Let us close. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, this is practical. How to know that somebody is not a generational thinker? It starts from the household. How to know somebody is, is not a living, cannot live a sacrificial life? In your mother's kitchen, there is food that can be enough for only three persons. And you are senior brother. See my hand. You are the senior sister. The way they trained us, you have to give it up to the younger ones. But today, oh boy. Sometimes I look at my son. The second one, my second son. I look at two of them. At times you just see him sacrifice things for that one. Okay. I when I was talking to him, I said, you are living the life of a senior brother. I'm proud of you. Some senior brothers, there are wicked senior brothers. <laughs> wicked senior sisters. In short, can I tell you the truth? You are a disappointment to be in that position. For you not to be able to live a sacrificial life is wrong. If you can't consider others in your decisions, you are wicked. Number three. Number one, be a tomorrow thinker. Number two, be sacrificial. Number three. It's a law. Your success must be monumental. Your success must be monumental. If God has blessed you, always think, what am I living for the people coming after me? Very important. Because a just man, a good man, leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Give me that verse. Verse 12 of John chapter 4. I read it and then we pray. The woman asked Jesus, what a question. Are thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? What a question. Now hear me. True greatness is impacting the next generation. The woman asked him, you claim you are great? You cannot be greater than the man who, who passed something on to us and our children's children. True greatness is impact. And impact impacting the next generation. And can you hear this? You cannot be thinking of others. How to be a blessing to others and not be a blessing to yourself. Because that woman said there, are you greater than our father? Who gave us the well? Who also drank of it? Whatever you are thinking and planning for people must get to you. Am I talking to someone here right now? A pipe that gives water to a house cannot lack water. But when you are thinking about yourself alone, you have limited yourself. Every man should be able to have an extension of himself everywhere. Today, as you stretch your hand, I pray for someone here. After your days, your youth season, your days on earth, you will be always remembered for the impact you made in the name of Jesus Christ. 